What's the story behind this? Do you want the long version or the short version? We'll, we'll go with the long version. Oh boy. So I've known this car since I was about 16 years old. It was my best friend's car in high school. So we're going back like almost 30 years that I've known this car. He had bought it all through high school. I had a North American muscle car, so it was always tuner versus muscle car, which better. And uh, so we spent long nights working on this car, working on my car together. And um, when we started our shop, JH Restorations, back in 2005, we were actually doing a RS500 clone to this car. So these cars were available in the UK as Cosworth's, uh, Sierra's, RS500s. The Sierra was the same car as the XR4Ti uh, Mercur was in North America, uh, but then there was two race components. There was a Cosworth car and an R uh, RS500 car. So in North America, they really liked the styling of the RS500 car, so they did fiberglass bumpers and they did fiberglass arches and rocker panel moldings for the car. And that's what we were installing on the vehicle at that time. So when we were in 2006 or so, we were building that RS500 clone. And my friend uh, had a career change. He moved over to the US, uh, sold the car locally. I kept ta uh, tabs on it, kind of knew where it was. But at that point, we'd already done all the suspension upgrades, transmission upgrade, all that kind of stuff. And it went to another shop and who was also a Mercur lover. Uh, he took the car all apart, put all the goodies into his car, and then had a parts car. And he kept over the period of 10 years, about a decade or so, borrowing parts. So then we needed door panels, switches, headlights, whatever. And I kept tabs on it, uh, went by a shop one day, was sitting out front of the shop, said, hey, if you ever want to get rid of that thing, just let me know what you want to do, we can make a deal. So he sold it back to me. And my idea at the time was to build it the way that my friend Tim was gonna build the car. So we still got the body kit, we were gonna put it on. Then we found out the car was just missing a lot of pieces. So I bought another Mercur to use as a parts car to fix his car. Well, that car was too clean. So we went back to this one and said, what can we do that can set this car apart? And that's where the idea came to say, if Ford was building this car now, what would it look like? What would modern hot rodding do to this car? So uh, in that sort of sense, we evolved it into this. So why yeah. is it? called RS4TI. So RS is back is an homage to the UK cars and for TI it was four cylinder turbo injected. Yeah, the RS and it could be like the Focus RS yes. or the RS200. Yes. Right. What was the condition of this before you started this build? It was a really solid shell. Most of the interior bones were there. Uh, the suspension major components were there but all the brakes, all the performance powertrain was gone. Glass was still in it. The original Mercur glass was in the car, was in great shape. But that's pretty much about it. You know, it had a decent dash. Steering, steering column was in the car, but everything else was pretty much, pretty much missing out of the car. And then so you guys created this kit. Yeah, so <laughs> it all started with how do we get the, e the Ford EcoBoost motor into the car. So we did a, a scan of the engine bay to figure out how we would get that engine in the car. Because it's direct injected, we had to push the HVAC and the firewall three inches back away from the high pressure fuel pump. Then what we did is we got the engine in the vehicle, we had to change the oil pan to a Ranger oil pan and we got the engine in the car. Well, then the engine stuck up above the fender, so that led into the hood. And then the hood was more aggressive than the rest of the car, so we ended up scanning the whole car and creating molds to build this car, which is now four inches wider than the car would have been. So the main body is still the same width, but the flares make up the difference. And then from there, that led into all the suspension upgrades. So the old uh, Mercur suspension was yoinked, gone. And it's all based on SN95 Mustang. It's got Corvette C6 hubs on it to allow us to go to 14 inch brakes. Front and rear. Uh, the rear suspension is 8.8 .8 Ford out of a 2018 Mustang. And again, half shafts are half Ford, half Chevrolet. Um, just get allowed us a bigger brake pattern in the back. And there's, I could just keep going and going. So it's still all wheel drive? No, these cars were never all wheel drive. Uh, it was the next generation that went to all wheel drive. Oh. This vehicle was all, even the RS cars and the, and the, and the uh, Cosworths were only rear wheel drive cars. Oh. Yeah. It, when I look at it, I, it looks like an all wheel drive car. Yeah, it looks really aggressive. It looks yeah. like it would be, but no, you could. There were some guys that retrofit them to four wheel drive. Uh -huh. uh, we negated to do that. It was just you know, a lot more work than this was. Because the concept of this car was, what can you build out of a fun 80s car that's cheap like you can buy three of these for a thousand bucks. Like, in, you know. What like year is this? 87. It, it definitely has a, a lot of Fox body in the back here. Yeah, that's what we did. So originally the bumper had the biggest crush supports in it. So the bumper was four inches deeper than it is now. We pushed it in like the UK cars because they didn't have the same crash standards. And then we wanted that 80s throwback. We wanted that SVO, that you know, Fox body bumper look to it. Because again, we're trying to keep that 80s theme going with the car. It looks really good. So then the taillights, are those stopped? 
Those taillights are stock, but they're from the next generation of car, the Sapphires. Um, because of the big UK plate, these the original taillights were really square and boxy looking. Uh -huh. uh, and, and then the back end of the car looked really naked in this area. So we bought another set of taillights and grafted them into the car. Tell me about the color. The color was, we were looking for something really muted and that would kind of accent the neon orange. And it came up with a Ford Area 51 Blue. So this would be on your new Broncos, the Maverick pickup trucks, things like that. It's a really complicated color to kind of work into a car because it changes colors for a solid color. But um, it worked out really well. It looks so good. Thank you. It definitely looks like a modern version of this car. Yeah. And like even the way the fitment the way the front lip is. So did you guys have to, you have, you guys made all of this stuff. Yeah, the front lip is all uh, uh, solid foam core and then we fiberglassed over it. So the original car would have had a splitter on it. Again, we went more aggressive with it. Front bumper would have been two pieces. So it would have been a lower piece here and then an upper piece here. We joined it all together to kind of give it a seamless look. It looks so much better that yeah. way. Yeah, you don't have the big oh gap in it. God. It looks really nice. Thank I've you. always loved the way the front end of these look but this just even improves on it. Yeah, you just don't have the bumper more. gap anymore, yeah. I love these headlights so much. Yeah. So then you guys had to create like this, this like your grill, yes. your own kind of grill, and then yep. it kind of goes through. They were, uh, all, they were all designed in house and it was all done with layered uh, stainless steel. And then the pattern for it, the honeycomb pattern, if you will, is actually the Mercur emblem. Oh. So, if <laughs> so we tried to kind of, so if people walk by the car, are really kind of confused, but if you if you look really closely, there is that's, some call outs to Mercury. That's really car. neat. Can we take a look at the engine bay? Yeah, sure, no problem. How long did it take for you to build this? Uh, we worked on it on and off for three and a half years. Jeez, this is so crazy looking. <laughs> Thanks, I, thank you very much. I mean, this, so, is this all new or um, what did the, you have to do with this? This part here was factory, uh -huh. but we cleaned it up. We knocked all the dents out, filled all the holes in. Now, this area here, we had to remake the shock towers or strut towers because it's all SN95. Mm. So we recreated the top part of the, the strut tower. And um, then why did you have to go SN95? We just wanted more parts availability. Uh, you couldn't get a big enough brake package for the Mercur brakes. I and mean, if you if we tried to create something, there'd be too much brake force on it because they're small little parts that would have broken. So we went into that. That allowed us to use more North American hot rod parts building the car. We went with QA1 for the coilovers in the front and the rear suspension in the back and their drive shaft is in the car. So we just kind of worked, it was very, uh, we're very familiar with the products. We build a lot of cars using them. So we kind of figured out how to get them all into this car. You know, if you told me you were putting uh, EcoBoost in this, I would have thought it would actually sit lower, but it's actually a pretty big motor. It's a really huh? tall engine, yeah. It's really deep. Uh, we, it's even, it's, it would have even been taller than this, and, but we wouldn't have an oil pan or a cross motor because we uh, it actually has a balance shaft in it that we took out because we could not fit that in the car. And you could not push this down any lower into the vehicle. We, we, we like I said, we scanned the engine bay and scanned the original suspension to create the cross member and everything for this car. And it, that's just, it's just where it had to live. What did this actually come out of? The engine, while this is a Ford, is a Ford crate engine. Our original EcoBoost motor was out of a 2018 Mustang. Mm -hmm. Ford came on board to help us out with the project and they said, what about doing an EcoBeast? So it's their lower rotating assembly, rods, pistons, cylinder heads with upgraded camshaft, throttle body, bigger Ford turbo. It's basically st stock out of the catalog from Ford. We just kind of made it look nice at home here. It just looks so Awesome. And did Thank you guys you. make this yourself then? Uh, no, the engine cover is Ford. One wing is original Ford. We made the other side match. Got it. Because a lot of times these are mounted the other way. They could be mounted the other way in the, in the yes, exactly. So they would have been mounted the other way. So the the engine cover wouldn't have been symmetrical. Uh, uh, it's still not really like you can see where the, the high pressure fuel pump is. Yeah. But you know, you can only take it so far. Is this all stock? All stock components, yes. And so, did you have a chance to dyno this? Uh, it has not been on the dyno. It's supposed to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 475 to 500 horse. That's more than enough. So when we get back, we're going to work with Livernoy Motorsports, SEMA, and Ford Performance and get this thing on a dyno and show you guys what it can do. So then, what about the steering? Is it all stock components? Yeah, it's electric power steering from the same 2018 Mustang. Oh. I can't believe it. You guys, <laughs> you guys really did it. 
you guys did a number on this it's, vehicle. I it really is appreciate so cool. that. Sometimes it's it's hard. You stare at a car for three and a half years, and it's the same car you've been looking at for three and a half years. And it, when it turns out, and you have people coming up and just in awe, you're like, all right, job done. It's so That's good. good. If you look at the dash, you can see the Mercur badge. Yeah. There. The interior is just as wild. Yeah, so we tried to keep, like, the dash is stock. And the Mercurs would have had a glove box, so that cover just pops right out because they were just like a just a crevice where you could put stuff. It wasn't like a glove box door that opened. Mm. So the only change to the dash, really, from appearance-wise from a Mercur is that we put a plug in it. The RS500 cars would have had a plug. The same plug would have said RS on it. Um, but then, but you obviously reupholstered all yes, of this. Yes, yeah, everything's been leather wrapped. These dashes warped like crazy. They're all cardboard cords, so they all kind of came apart. Um, so we re readdressed it. Um, the gauge cluster is made by Dakota Digital, but has all the original lighting, fix it, fits in all the original housing with the original lens. All the switches and everything are original to the vehicle. Kind of went with the 80s theme, like all the HVAC stuff is the same, but we got like a Blaupunk radio in it, but it's the new one with Bluetooth. Oh, and the door actually drops so down neat. so I can get into here. So that is the USB so cool. ports and all your auxiliary ports. Instead and, of a tape. Yep. Cassette tape. So we got oh. all that. We I even added it. in the little equalizer there to kind of throw back that feel. So so good the interior is so finished so then how, what about all this plastic stuff did this you is all, this or it was all painted all interior trim painted oh, so the, 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 the sill plates the kick panels the dash lower dash plastic is all original to the car amazing all of this too yeah all of it so is. then and you did you have to refinish this stuff too um some things were missing other things we worked with mercur midwest uh, jeff herson he supplied a lot of the mercur parts for this car stuff that we couldn't find or stuff that we had to replace but uh, it's all original Ford i pieces. can't believe how clean everything is the headliner even the visors the sunroof the sunshade yeah the sunshade yeah this one originally had like a flocking material on it we tried to reflock it but every time you roll it back it would push the flocking off so we just we ended up painting it gray it looks so good so then this was done this was taken down to bare metal no not all the way we, we took that we took it down sanded it out blocked it out, got it pretty straight but the car was in such good shape that it was basically blocked down and then sealed and we did rust repair where we had to very minimally rust repair where we had to but no we tried to with this car we tried to build something that was somewhat attainable for people like because we tried to take an obscure car that you could buy like i said before you could buy three of them for a thousand dollars and you don't want to break the bank building a car you know so we tried to kind of take what you what we had to build a car with it so we kind of you know we didn't take it all the way down to bare metal we we're just trying to show people what you can do with a fun little car i mean you you tricked me that's for sure i mean all of this the door seal all of this is so finished yeah. i it's cannot all, like believe I said, how it was all it, it was all taken down and dressed and if there was any issues it was taken care of but no it was original paint your interior over. guy is incredible yeah vlad messick did an incredible job of it you know, they, Look made at the, this. these insets here are a, a panel that's not original to the vehicle if you know anything about the mercurs they're all one piece uh pressed and it starts lifting on us so we had to kind of change all that so this is an inset panel that's got some blue lighting around it that kind of accents these here so tell me about the seats. Uh, they're out of uh, RS Focus, and they were original. They're original to that car as a Recaro, and we found actually, funnily enough, last year at SEMA, until we found this material on eBay, uh, we were going to put plaid interior in the car, and then we found this happened across it on eBay. We bought a bolt of it and took the RS Focus seats apart, and away we went. This is the real deal material. Like this yeah, is actual real, deal, real yeah. Recaro material. Real vintage Recaro. Yep. From from. The era or from what? the era, yeah. Recaro produced this back in the eighties. <laughs> I just my my mouth is just <laughs> constantly open <laughs> talking about this car. Yeah, it, it's so cool, it looks like shower tile, but it's like from the era. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And then the, the headrests, they're all fox body halos. And then we wanted to do that sort of you know vintagey look with it, so we copied the grill design and put it into the headrests. And it's amazing you had enough material for the back, too. Oh, we've, we've got some more left if you want to. We can, build a, we can make a pair of pants out of it if you want to. <laughs> that, that's what you should be wearing when you're driving this. <laughs> I never thought that. Yeah. Wow. Even this, this matches, too. This yeah. carpet material, Yeah. I, I feel like matches the, the, pretty the good. The Daytona weave, yes. Yeah. So it's we did a really cut and nice. sew. The carpets weren't available. We couldn't find one in good enough shape to use in the vehicle. And we'd modified the floor a little bit to move to get these seats in the car. But uh, yeah. so all of this stuff works like the gauges, everything, all yeah. of it works. Everything works and lights up. Yeah. And because the gauges, 
And we're made by Dakota Digital to fit in the original housing. So Jordan, my brother, he's the engineer on staff, he did all the design work to allow it to work and then we worked with Dakota Digital to create something that was original looking for the vehicle. I love the theme. Fun what what's there? The fun Haver Fun Haver. Uh, it, it matches the interior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we wanted something modern yeah. and fun. Yeah. And then the shift knob? Uh, the shift is a bowler, bowler shift knob. They gave it to us with all the machining done and then we took it in and powder coated it. It looks great. It looks really good. I can't believe this build. It's, it's like so, so crazy just to make it look OEM. Yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of what we do with the vehicles that we build. We try to say like, what if this happened? What if Ford did this again? What would it look like? What if it was available in North America? What would it look like? So, Are you going to drive this around? Oh, yeah. yeah we've, we've driven it quite a bit. It'll do the show circuit, but yeah, we're going to drive it. Yeah. Put it through spaces and show people what it can do. It's not real unless it's driven, right? So, oh, I just can't wait to see this on the road. This is just so good. Amazing. How many miles have you put on it? Well, we put the stickers on it before we loaded on the trailer, so like a ninth of an eighth of a mile, maybe. Like, oh, that's else. it? Yeah, there's nothing. Like, we've okay. driven around the building, done some testing to it, made sure everything worked the way it should, but there's no mileage on this thing. You didn't need to push it into here? No, nope. no, nope, we drove it in. One last thing, I didn't get to talk to you about the wheels. Tell me about the wheel and tire setup here. Well, we're in the toil booth, so of course it has to be toy tires. And then with, we came down, because the car was North American, uh, yeah, we could have gone to Rada for him to kind of keep that sort of European sports car thing going, but we wanted the North American muscle look to it. So we went with American Racing, who better to go with? I mean, they set the standard way back when, so we wanted to give them a shot at it, and I think they, they just killed it with these wheels. So. It's a square setup? Yeah, as close as we could, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why when I look at it, I assume that this is all a drive, but it just, it sits so right. The way that this, d did you guys design all this stuff in CAD? Yes, or? we did, yeah. We had uh, Trevor from ACL Designs worked and laid all out the, the heavy CAD work for it. And uh, Matt Labute, he's the one that did all the rendering for it. So if you look at the rendering, the car looks pretty much like the rendering. So. It looks so good. What is the plate? A, a hoser. Yeah. It's kind of like the Canadian version of when you're following us down the road saying, hey, loser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that wing is the coolest thing about this car. It makes the whole car. Yeah. We were, we were gonna make it bigger and more aggressive, but we're like, nah, it kinda flows right now with the it, car. It, it flows so well. There's supposed to be another lower uh, uh, foam urethane wing down here, and we had it on the car, it just took away from the whole feel, the whole flow of the vehicle, so we left it with the big whale tail on it. Amazing. Just because. You did it just because. You, you could do because. it. Yep. Kudos to you. What a, what a beautiful build. I love it. This is what I love about coming to the SEMA show because it, it's just, it, I'm speechless. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. No Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. Can't wait to see what you're going to build next. Uh, we've got a couple things out there, so we'll, we'll let you know. We'll let cool. You know. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Right, Thank cool. you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.